Welcome back to the Conscience of Kansas radio program with Paul A. Ibbotson. All right, radio listeners, today we have a very interesting guest in the former First Lady of Virginia, Susan Allen. She's got a wonderful new children's book out entitled The Remarkable Ronald Reagan, Cowboy and Commander-in-Chief. And Susan Allen, we'd like to welcome you to the Conscience of Kansas radio program. It's such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. And anytime I can talk about the remarkable Ronald Reagan, it's a thrill. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's a, I feel the same way. I was passing through a grocery store here in the state of Kansas, and I saw this book, children's book out there talking about Barack Obama. And, and you know that uh, children will be picking up those books and, and reading. And I thought, man, you know, there, it's not so much a counter argument to Ronald Reagan, but people need to under to uh, Barack Obama. But people need to know just what kind of man Ronald Reagan was. And you got a very interesting book. I was wondering if you could tell our folks the age range that you're looking for for this book and a little bit about why you wrote it. Sure. Well, we, we put together the remarkable Ronald Reagan uh, for elementary school children because we really felt the need to educate young people about the philosophy of Ronald Reagan, but maybe even as important, his ability to have the American dream come true. You know, Ronald Reagan worked so hard growing up in a very humble background Mm -hmm. uh, with a mother who taught him to uh, reach out to his fellow human beings and show a kind heart. His mom would often invite people to stay in their home who were needy or who needed a place to stay. And Reagan worked many different jobs growing up. He was a lifeguard. He uh, worked radio. And his dream, though, was to eventually become an actor, which he did and starred in 53 different movies and even helped during World War II doing training films for the Army. But all the while, he had this wonderful work ethic, working very hard to achieve his goals and making sure that he had that internal compass that guided him. He had a very strong faith, again, taught by his mother, and had many wishes to make the world a better place for his fellow human beings. And thank goodness he was in wonderful roles where he could do that, president of the Screen Actors Guild, yeah. then governor of California, and then eventually as president. Yeah, it's an amazing story with Reagan. One of the things, and tell me if you agree, but Susan, one of the things I have found with a lot of our presidents, now I was alive when Ronald Reagan was president, I was in high school, and I, I learned so much more uh, about him after he was president because I got in there and I researched. But a lot of people who don't, a lot of times these presidents just become blips on your consciousness. You really don't know much more or you're, everything you're getting is coming out of the school system, which in, in many times is, is not positive or accurate. Uh, so do you see an importance to, to have a book so these presidents such as Ronald Reagan don't just slip through the cracks? Absolutely. You know, uh, we, George and I, my husband and I, live in Virginia where we say America began, and also it's the home to eight presidents. Mm-hmm. We live right next door to George Washington's home in Mount Vernon, and history is a huge part of our daily lives here in Virginia. But in our school systems, you are correct. Oftentimes, our young people are taught maybe so quickly they, they race through the presidents, um, and we feel like it's so important that people understand the role that Ronald P- P- uh, Reagan played not just in our national history, but even international history, when he went to Berlin and asked Mr. Gorbachev to tear down that wall. That was the beginning of the end of communism. Mm -hmm. And people all around the world to this day thank Ronald Reagan for being their voice while they were oppressed behind the Iron Curtain and they couldn't speak out. So he had not just an impact on the lives of those of us who were living here, but people indeed around the world. And the other thing I see is that with today young people who use all of this wonderful technology we have but they often learn to talk in sound bites uh, 140 characters a tweet bite you could call it um, they need to learn from ronald reagan the great communicator what it took to capture the imagination of fellow americans to have them unite with him in his ideals and his philosophy to lead a great america and that came from his background of reading and studying and sharpening his skills as a communicator in the debate club, giving speeches. Uh, All along the way, he perfected his ability to communicate with those around him, and he really was extremely effective. And I would hope those are skills that young people do not lose in today's 
world of uh, box communication is what I call right. it, whether they're, it's through their phone or their computer, all of which is fantastic and good and gives you quick access to information. But we cannot diminish uh, our ability to be able to communicate human to human. Well, I, I totally agree. And ladies and gentlemen in Radio Land, we're speaking to Susan Allen. A brand new book out there, a children's book entitled The Remarkable Ronald Reagan, Cowboy and Commander-in-Chief. And uh, one of the things I sensed as a, as a high school student that didn't really know much about politics, didn't really know much about presidents, and had no background history on Reagan was his optimism. I could sense the optimism of that man through the television screen, dealing with you know the positive things when he turned the economy around, but also dealing with tragedy when we had the, the space shuttle explosion, we lost those astronauts, and, and Reagan's uh, words of not only condolence, but the idea that we would continue on, we wouldn't give up, uh, amazing things. I remember when he got uh, the Berlin Walls, you know, tear down this wall, stood up against a lot of folks that didn't want him to make those strong statements. Right. You know, an, an amazing man. W- what I think about is the potential, a book like this, you're, you're really uh, laying a legacy to to the young people. I have a 18 month year old daughter, my only child. Congrats. And, <laughs> just had one of my first Father's Day, and so it's just Really, really exciting. I want her to learn those good values right out of the gate. I, I don't want her to be in college and be stuck in some required course in front of a socialistic professor telling you how bad Ronald Reagan was. You know, I, I have three college degrees. I have been in front of many liberal professors in many different universities that will tell you Ronald Reagan was the devil and did everything bad. And I want my child to have some foundation of accuracy before that time may come. Well, Dr. Dr. Ibbotson, I think you're off to a great start. And um, you ought to add this book to your daughter's home library, as every parent should. The Remarkable Ronald Reagan is a great way to have a, a tool that tells the life story of Ronald Reagan, including his dream to one day be able to ride horses every day. And so after being governor, he bought a ranch in California to be able to do just that. But in the back of this book, we have quotes of his, uh, photographs, highlights of his, uh, his life in sort of a timeline fashion. We have some copies of letters that he wrote because he was a prolific writer. Um, but you're right, his sunny optimism. Boy, does everybody remember that. And, and we could all use a dose of that because we take such pride in being Americans, no matter what state we're from. Those of you in Kansas take great pride in being from the middle section of the country. We take great pride in, here in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And everybody loves that. But as a nation, we too want to believe that we are waiting for sunnier days ahead, and we want our leadership to convey that to us. Ronald Reagan had that true gift. Uh, he became a family friend with the Allen family. My father-in-law was a football coach, and Reagan used to come uh, to watch the L.A. Rams practice when Coach Allen was there in Los Angeles. And the family loved the fact that, as a governor, he didn't show up just at the games, but he showed up at practices, too, to to watch the strategy, to watch the young people perform, and to really uh, understand the game and the competition. And so when Reagan, in 1976, called my husband, who was in the state legislature at the time, or excuse me, just out of law school at the time, to say, George, would you please run Young Virginians for Reagan? I'm going to run for president. My husband uh, had not ever been involved in organized politics and said, well, what am I supposed to do, uh, Mr. Reagan? And Reagan said, I heard you say great things about me. Please just continue to do that in Virginia. And in in the end, Virginia in 1976 did vote for Reagan. It took the rest of the country four years to catch up, uh, to recognize what a wonderful man he was. And then, of course, His legacy uh, went on to improve America, and and we've got to bring that sunny optimism with us wherever we go, because surely as Americans, we have the brain power, the knowledge, the innovation to figure everything out, and we do come from such a beautiful, beautiful country Mm -hmm. and place in the world, and uh, we need leaders like Ronald Reagan who will guide us with that optimism, because that is how you unite people uh, behind good ideas and uh, a sunny disposition. Well, we certainly do. Of course, we need uh, leadership like George Allen gives as well. And and just uh, send our, our thoughts to him as well because he's done so many good things as well. And it's amazing to have this, uh, to kind of get your political career kind of jump-started and, and with motivation for someone like Ronald Reagan. I mean, that that's, a, that's an amazing uh, 
uh, and solid foundation to start with. Absolutely. Well, you know, it was the ideas that Ronald Reagan had, and that's why his legacy is so lasting. One of the things that my husband loved about Reagan as governor of California was that he implemented the idea of workfare, that if you were receiving benefits from the government and you were able-bodied, that you were then asked to give back to the community if you could not find employment. And my husband implemented that here in Virginia as governor as well, which then instilled great pride in people who were able to get off of that cycle of dependency. And what a wonderful way to, to really um, break that cycle and teach the next generation that having a job gives you worth and gives you value. But those ideas are very important and part of our culture, as long as the leadership is there, to push that and convey that at the right time. And Ronald Reagan did that, and I'm happy that my husband, George Allen, was able to follow along with many of his ideas and implement things like that in Virginia as well. Well, yes, and, I, and when I look here uh, on, on the book uh, reading, I see that you've got some, a lot of wonderful illustrations in the book. Some of that's done by Leslie Harrington, who's done wonderful stuff with National Geographic. Uh, and that's another thing I think it's it's interesting when you're young, you you learn about people, but you get a mental image, a picture in your mind yes. of that. I have pictures in my mind of Ronald Reagan in different uh, uh, speeches that he gave. And sometimes those mental images just um, embody a, a few thoughts like courage. You know, Reagan wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid not only of, of liberals that didn't like him, you know, vehemently, but he wasn't afraid of bucking the communists. He wasn't afraid of uh, going in and saying the hard things, even back when he was in the Actors Guild, when he was, you know, saying communism's bad. I, you know, we, we need to we need to fight this now. I mean, man, well, you know, that was just uh, uh, stuff that's so true today. You have to have courage. Yeah. You have to have inner uh, an inner courage, a belief in your foundational core principles. And he exuded that, and, and that transferred on to, to a lot of folks. Well, you're exactly right. He he was bold, and but he did it. Um, I I like to say like a good parent. You mm-hmm. know, somebody who maybe at the at the time you think, gosh, that's being really tough, tough love, or you know, being really hard. But really, it's it was through the process of believing that individual responsibility was so important, and that a uh, lesson uh, learned would be one that uh, if we have. Uh, fewer government interventions in your lives, people would continue to prosper, would Mm -hmm. pursue their happiness and their dreams in our country. And Reagan believed that with sort of an innate sense in every single person, that people wanted to strive to be the best they could be. And uh, he was not afraid to make policy that would allow people to take on their own course. And um, just like a good parent, you know, in the end you think, oh, yeah, he was right. He was right. Yes. He knew what he was doing, and he had that core conviction. And uh, there will never really be another Ronald Reagan, but we can all learn from him, that we can pursue our dreams and uh, try to achieve our goals, and that hard work, that strong work ethic uh, will get you where you need to be, even if sometimes there are failures, because sometimes you learn more from failures. But if you strive to achieve your dream, you keep your ethics, and you work hard, anything is possible in America. And, you know, that was one of the things that that, uh, Reagan did very well is he uh, built people up instead of tearing people down yes. to, to try to uh, further conservative values. And uh, so you could, he, the message was strong and it was bold, but he talked about what America could be from this point on. And, you, and, you know, history coming out of uh, Jimmy Carter administration, the misery index and the president coming on saying, we're not what we used to be. I remember that. I was a, I was yeah. a kid, but I thought, man, <laughs> things are as bad as they appear. The president just come out there and, you know, said it's all going to pot. Reagan came out and said, "You know, we are going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to move forward in a positive way. I have my plan, but man, we're a great people, and great things are ahead if we will do great things. If we will work hard, and, and and that that's a message we don't have today. Today, in my opinion, it's more of those attack politics. You beat your opponent down, and if they're really down low, then you're above them. Reagan was was never about that." He was always about taking the high road, fighting the hard battle, but he did it in a positive way. That's why they call him the great communicator. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking to Susan Allen, 
brand new book, children's book. You need to get it. It's entitled The Remarkable Ronald Reagan, Cowboy and Commander-in-Chief. We're going to make it very easy. You can get it at Amazon.com, Regnery Publishing, all your major book outlets just coming out. We've got the links for it at IbbotsonUSA.com, our master website of superior conservative values. All you got to do there is click and get it. It'll be simple. You need to have it in your children's library. I'm going to have it in mine. Susan Allen, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity for us to speak with you today. Do you have any uh, parting thoughts before we sign off with you? I appreciate your time so much, Dr. Ibbotson. And if people want to buy this book, not just for their own children or grandchildren, but to place in public libraries and yes. school libraries, we want to get the remarkable Ronald Reagan in the hands of young people all across America. So we greatly appreciate your help with this. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get some copies to uh, place in some of the libraries here in Kansas because it needs to be there. It needs to get into the hands of tomorrow's youth, uh, the leaders of tomorrow. And Susan Allen, I want to thank you so much for coming on the Conscience of Kansas radio program. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.